Hey everybody, welcome back. And yes, there is a trip going on, but do not worry. The bridge is still being worked on. It's just I've been working on that project for close to a year and I'm just going to take this week to take a quick little breather. But it's okay. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Um, so what this is, is the Revel 125th scale Ford F100 pickup, of course. The Foos design. Reading right from there. And I got this uh, in a drawing from one of the, uh, sorry, I got my phone out, my scale model communities I belong to. So I got this from the scale model builders for fun and sale. So I'm having a lot of fun. And I'm, I'm as you can see, I'm kind of not following the instructions I'm painting. But hey, so I'm going to put the phone down. So yes, this is episode one of the truck. I have gotten a lot done. I got a lot of painting. And I go through in a lot of detail on things that I'm doing throughout the build. Um, uh, lots of fun. I mean, engines coming together. I, you know, I'm not going to take away from the video. But yes, lots of paint, lots of parts, stuff put together. Um, but I will tell you the frame is, yeah, yeah, you can see that. Engines come together well, but I'm not going to take away from the video. So I will stop that right now. Um, yeah, so if you are new to my channel, please click on the subscribe button. Click on the little bell, you know, every time I upload. Um, if you have a question about this build, if I didn't go into enough detail, or you got questions on the other builds that I've done on my channel, or you got questions about a build you're doing, and you're, you're, you're getting frustrated, you're getting stuck, you're, you're trying to get somewhere, I, I don't know. If you know, if you would like some, ah, if you have a question, or if you'd like me to go through some more, or help you with your, your build, please email me at bucktmore at gmail.com. I will respond, and as always, you can put in the comments, Hey Buck, good job. Hey Buck, eh, okay, it's your build, it works. And then, Buck, seriously man, what the heck were you thinking? Please put that in the comments, and I will I respond within 12 to 24 hours. So with that, let's get to the bench and start working on the truck. Well, hello everyone, and yes, that's right, there's a vehicle. I know I've got a couple going on, but here's another one. And I get... I, I won this from a very, very awesome community, um, the Scale Model Builders for Fun and Sell. I got it, um, I got it from them, and I really want to thank Mike and everybody over there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and I promised them um, when I started building this, I was going to do one of my videos for it, so that's what I'm going to do. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let's get into it. It is a Revell, as yeah, you can tell, it's a 125th scale, and the box art ain't bad. But you, you get a lot of just drawing on it, and this is the only built part you can... Sorry guys, the only built part, but uh, it's alright, trust me, we're going to have some fun with this. So, before we delve into the instructions and the decals, I've already cleaned the parts. Now I'm going to start taking some of these off the sprue. But, you know, sometimes it's a hit or miss with me with Rebels. Um, sometimes they do really good, and sometimes I'm like, are you kidding me? But there's a really great detail. This is the bottom of the truck bed. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with these little chrome buggers here in a minute, here in a bit. But going through the parts, I mean, it's really done well. So, I mean, I'm really liking it. This is the frame. And still going through things, learning all the fun engine and exhaust and all that. This is just going to be kind of fun. And then. Uh, support inside upside um, this goes actually on top of the truck like like this um, okay, come here. so you get that little bit of a, a shadow there a shadow effect um, but yay and I mean lots of really neat parts in there's the truck or the body the front end inside doors hood Truck bed, the nice clear parts, a little bit of a uh, red light to add that effect. Also, got some decent looking tires to show you how we take uh, take care of those, get those seams out of the way. And then the inevitable when you open a box up, and you always start, and you kind of go, what the heck? Oh, where's everything? And, and then, if I were to actually use my tweezers. Then you get the little bits that just, you know, you're like, oh. And the funny thing is, the the 
oil pan and the valve cover, yeah. But what I was having trouble was trying to find this little guy on the sprue. I noticed it, I noticed there wasn't nothing on the sprue, so I started looking and I, I went through bags and bags and bags, and then I finally looked back in the box and there was that little bugger, the distributor. So, yay. All right, let's get this stuff back in here for a minute. And we'll break out the instructions. And start that. So, here is, sorry, I'm not under camera. Sorry, I'm trying to get in here. So here is the Rebel Ford FD100 pickup, um, the Foose. And it's not really bad instructions. One of the things I'm gonna tell you guys, um, if you're just starting to get into building or, you know, you do build, um, a lot of times I will take this whole front page because it's got, you know, the paint colors and um, I, I might take cut this out and tape it up so I can see it and refer to it. Um, but it gives you a whole list of all the parts. I mean, a lot of parts. And then on this kit, um, you got a color, you got a decal all the way through. Um, here's just the engine you get. Let's see. Two, four, six, seven decals just on the top of the engine. And then here's the rest, you know, lots of local things. Not, not a very, not a bad kit at all. And then here's another decal on top of that. And then like I said, because you see it says A, 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 you know, you're trying to figure out what paint and you don't want to keep flipping back and forth on the pages. So you can do that. That's why I cut that page out. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I mean, even here on, sorry, let me get it in camera. Even... Sometimes I can't see it, so when I'm looking at the camera, making sure I'm in frame with you guys. I mean, even here you can see it gets uh, decal, and then like I said, you know, you see D and G, and then you're like, okay, well, what color is that? So D is gloss black, and G is steel. Okay, that's not too hard. And then just a lot of the fun, because there's going to be a lot of things that I'm going to I'm going to paint ahead and cure before I put it into the kit. Um, because once you put certain parts together, there's just no way to paint and get that good effect of paint. So, and then again, here is the side, and then yes, it's going to roll. And as you can see, even here for underneath, I mean, the entire thing is E. And what was E? Oh, E was semi-gloss black. So, okay, I, I that's something I'm going to have to take a look at. That's something I'm going to see if that's something I want to do or if I want to make it even better. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to research the, you know, the truck a little more online. But then again, so there's two small decals here, big decal here. Lots of little good fun decals. And then the inside of the cab. And putting on the truck bed, getting everything set to the truck. Um, so not, not bad, not bad. I like that the hood's going to be able to open so you can see into it. Um, I'm trying to decide whether I'm actually, because I do have wiring, I can run some wiring in here. I have to, I'm gonna, I haven't played with that one yet, but I think I might just try to start that. And then, um, this shows the rest of the big decals once the truck's completed, but remember going through the instructions, you're going to need the little ones. So now, let's get on to the decal. And let's kind of zoom it in here, maybe. Okay, so this is right here is what was inside the truck, inside the cab. So that's one thing I'm going to be looking on. Um, and then here is the inside of the truck bed. I mean, that's a really beautiful, um, beautiful decals. Honestly, it's beautiful. Um, but you guys, um, if you're new to my channel, you know, if I can paint it, I am going to paint it. And uh, so we'll see once I start getting there. But now, uh, let me get some things moved around and uh, let's kind of get started with the parts. So give me just a second. Okay, so one of the first things I do when I start doing a car kit is, um, now some of the Tamiya models you do cars, their, their chrome work is very, very awesome. Uh, excuse me, sorry. And then others, you know, it's, it's like this. Um, so I usually strip the chrome. No, yep, I just get rid of the chrome. And 
Um, I will trim out, I'll take care of the wheels, the bumpers, and the front end, and then I'll leave these little pieces on the sprue, um, clean off some of the, you know, the jiblies. So, first thing I do is I take my snips and I just start trimming the parts. Like I can do, and I do this too as I'm, I'm getting done with the kit. As I get more parts done, I try to um, condense down the, sp the sprues. So there's that one. And there we go. Throw you away. Now the thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut it right here. And then I'm going to cut this right here. So now I got that sprue together all the way. And then the next thing I do is very gently I come in and I want to get rid of those little sprues there and then that way I'll get this all cleaned and then once it's clean I can go through and finish polishing the edges and stuff um, for the most part especially on the small parts I wait till after I'm pretty well done but you know I trim down the uh, sprue ends let me see where did I put you where did I looking for my 800 grit sandpaper if that's what you guys are wondering what I'm rambling about but that's all right. I got sandpaper I got a lot of sandpaper so all right so the 800 grits really good um, for a lot of things but I use it mostly um, to do like parts like this once the this chrome comes off and I, you know I don't really have to clean all that well because I'm getting rid of the chrome. So part in there, part in there. I'm just getting rid of the uh, the sprues. Or, you know, trying to get it separated. And now what I'll do, make sure you're in there, is then I'll just come and just be aware, guys, um, this 60 and then 61 so there's a trick I can do for that too um, so I don't forget what the sprue is and basically it's pretty much the tires and it shouldn't be too hard I'm just pulling out the instructions real quick so we can take a look see if I can take them off the sprue or not which I probably am going to anyway so rear tire 61 front tire 60 and as you can tell there's definitely a difference so and um, for that you can see this is a bigger drum smaller drum so good to go so here now I take and trip these and do these and I know I'm singing and rambling yay okay one more to go all right, got this, got that off. Now I use what's called purple power for a lot of the cleaning on my kits, especially my resin kits. But especially for getting chrome or any paintwork, if you need to redo your paint and you got to strip the whole kit, purple power is your best friend. Trust me, I've used it to redo lots of paint in that. So basically, I'm not even diluting it. I'm just going to pour it in here. And make a mess like that and then I'm just gonna let it just sit and I let it sit in there until it's done um, and it's gonna strip all that that chrome work off so I can redo it at a later date so I just moved over there so all right guys let me get cleaned up and I'm gonna start doing some of the pre-building and um, as I'm doing that I will share with you so I'll be right back Okay, so I'm starting to do some of the trimming. I'm taking certain things off. Now, like for the steering wheel and the shifter, I'm leaving on the sprue and I'll touch up the paint afterwards. But I want to go ahead and get all these bigger pieces off and all that. So, now the fun part of all this is just... And you might be asking, well, do you, are you going to remember where, which part went to where? And for the most part, yes. But again, that's also why I leave certain things on the uh, 
on the, on the sprue until um, I'm ready to go do it. So, you know, things like... All right, let me show you. So, look at the, this. This is the um, steering and all that. So, I don't want to um, take them off because they're, they can get very um, crazy and break and you can, I lose them. I've, I've lost parts like that before. And then basically I will just take and snip and then I'll leave it like that. I will clear off the, the flash. Just like that. And I'll just put them in there with the other parts. And a lot of what I do, the first is basically I'm meeting the parts, I'm touching them, I'm getting a feel for how they are, how how you know clean I make out of them. If I need to do any more washing, I will. But most part, I don't have to. Um, but like I said, I want to get things like these little guys out of here because. I just, you know, don't need them. I want to get rid of it. So when I do go to paint this thing and get ready to do all that fun, lovely paint work, I don't have to try to start cleaning them again. I'll have them already cleaned and ready to go. So again, like I said, I just put put those there. And then, um, so for like, like here, I will take this off and put it together. I will take and... Um, I'm probably going to leave these little ones on the sprue because it'll be easier to paint this way. I do want to get this taken apart to paint it because I need to get, take care of that seam. And a lot of a lot of that, you'll see what I'm doing is I'm trying to take care of the seam um, because it's a piece of joints together. So there's that. And there we go. Now what I do again is I just start to clean. I don't want too many little, you know, big things in my way. So I just go and clean them like so. And for like me doing the uh, the axle there, um, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna take it apart. I'm going to take it off of here and I'll glue it, but I'll wait for that. I don't, I'm not quite ready yet, ready yet there. So, wait on that for a second. Get some of these cleaned up. Now, here's the interesting. Um, this is going to be 90% a lot of the pre-building I'm going to do. And there's certain things like, I'm going to leave the, the brakes on there. Um, I've already got one of the valve covers off, but I'm going to leave... Leave that on there. I gotta put the radiator together. I gotta put this together. I gotta do these guys. And, I, and I'll share that with you. I mean, that's the fun of it, right? So I'm not even gonna mess with that sprue for right now because I haven't got started on building anything yet. Right now, I am just meeting the parts and taking them off. Okay. Goodbye, Mr. Screw. Let's get this beauty cleaned out. And voila! Now I know I still got cleaning to do on it, but now you can get an idea of how cool that's gonna look in there. Look at that. That that's just awesome. I mean you can see some of the seam work I'm gonna have to do there. Um, and I will. That's not going to be too hard. Um, and what I might do, I'm still thinking about it, is because um, I, I want to get this painted inside too. But what I'm trying to think about right now is do I go ahead and paint this, get it all good, and then once I get it seated in and I get it all glued, then I'll take and I'll mask this off and protect that paint. So. That's probably what I'm going to do right here. So let's go. I'll throw you away. And let's get the cab taken care of now. And guys, when you're cutting these, um, you can, because you can see that thickness right there, 
be very careful. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll even come down here first and I'll take these sides off like so and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut part of it out so I can work with it easier and I don't have nothing binding or pulling down there and I will take my trip my snips and now I can do that so no muss no fuss nothing broke and yay that's everything here is the hood okay so yay all right well let's get rid of some of this because I'll work on that later I'll clean it up and work on it later and uh, so give me a second let me get resituated and uh, let's start putting some things together all right got my got some of the tools of my trade here Clamps, mostly just clamps. Um, trying to think here. I, I'm just looking because I'm. I'll explain as I go. Okay, so I've already cut the um, the axle off the sprue. I've already started cleaning it um, just so I can make sure that it goes the right way together. And because sometimes if you don't clean the flash, these will not come together like you want them to. And there's two ways to go about gluing. Um, for these smaller parts and a lot of these, I, I use my Tamiya Extra Thin. And then I will use my CA. But for this right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my Tamiya Extra Thin. Um, it's amazing. I love this stuff. And basically, I just go around and just get it going. And just letting it sit there and have us all fun. Then I will get the two parts to meet up. Like I said, I try not to try to touch as little as I can. Okay, there we go. Now, what I want to do is I want to make sure that they're going to stay together. So I clamp them most of the time. Mm, I got bigger ones here. I just didn't know if I wanted to use it, but that's okay. So not, then I'll just clamp them and I'll let that sit there and dry. That's all there is to it. So, yay. All right, now that's what I'm going to do with parts of the engine and stuff is just do that same thing. So I won't make you watch me go through all that. So, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to get working on parts of the engine. So as I get them finished, I'll turn the camera back on, and I'll see you then. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm starting to uh, uh, get the seams taken care of. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm using my CAD drum, um, this is basically a, a toe and heel filer, but it works great for models, because you can adjust the variable speeds and it's a lighter sander than a Dremel. And right now all I'm doing is, as you can see, all this little flash work right here. Um, I'm going to take it off. I've already worked on the engine block and the rear axle, and I wanted to keep this so you guys could actually see it, because there's some small parts down there. So I do have this on, uh, I have it light, and basically all I'm doing is I'm looking at making everything even, nice, and, you know, so there's that, so I can take care of that sand, seam, not Sam, easier, and, and I will be uh, using uh, putty, and I'll share that with you guys here real quick, but yeah, um, and a lot of times when you are working the seams, it's a good idea to go back and forth. You know, switch from side to side because as you're going down the seam, it's going to build up and you want to make sure to knock that off. So, and honestly, I want to, uh, before I actually do any putty, I'm going to give these guys a coat of uh, primer. So I can see exactly all that I really do need to get done with it um, to take care of the seams because sometimes you can look at it and think the seams good and then you know you've done all that work and then you go to paint it and it's like oh my god ah so so that's what I'm doing right now guys I'm still just kind of getting pre-builds done but yay and then here this is an easy one to look at now a lot of times when there's seams um, 
when there seems like on bottoms of things like that, I will most of the time hide them. I just want to look real quick so I can see. Okay. So I just want to get the frame out and share that with you guys real quick. So here is the frame again. And the radiator is going to go in right there, like that. Now, sometimes you think, okay, well, it's going to be covered up. But then you see right there, you can still see that seam. So if this gets turned over, it'll be a pain. Um, but like with the engine, the engine block, there's some places like here where the oil pan is going to go and right here. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I've, I've sanded them down, but I'm not uh going real crazy because they're covered up by something so let's get back to this one and sometimes you can when you go you can see if it's all glued around or that that uh, that plastic that styling might have a little bit of a dip in it or you know and like I said just come back and just Go back and forth till you feel good with it. And then, once I get that to a certain point, I'll grab my three, three, my heavy set, my heavy grit sandpaper, which is 320, or, yeah. And I'll come in and I'll do that. Now at this point, I mean, I can still see it, but I don't know how much I'm going to have to do um, so I want to get some you know paint on that primer on that so I can see what I'm going to need to keep working on when I go to start fixing the rest of the seams and so yay and right now like I said I'm still just working on getting pre-built or you know pre-building done so yay but uh, now the next part with this engine it's yeah it's gonna be fun so let me get things moved around and I'll come back. All right, before I get into too much more pre-building, I thought I'd share these with you guys. Now look at that, 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 ooh, pretty, pretty, pretty. It took all that plated chrome off really well. So yay, so now I'm gonna go get these washed and get them all drying and then get back to pre-building. All right, time to get a little paint down and when I, I'm going to primer the, these other pieces um, so I can check the seams. What I'm doing now is the pieces I don't really need to do a hard primer on. Well, I do... I'll, I'll tell you why. Give me just two seconds here. I need to grab these out too. All right. Okay, because a lot of this is... There is no seams for a lot of these. This is the easy part right now where I can go ahead and get, like I said, get some of the painting done. So what I'm going to do is because I'm going to be using Vallejo Metallics for a lot of this. Um, I want to go ahead and I'm making my base uh, white. Um, so it'll help, you know, brighten up the, the metallic paints. Um, you can go primer gray. You can go uh, satin black, satin white, whatever, you know. Um, but if you do do more of a, uh, a, a gray primer or a black primer, um, the black will definitely help give you that uh, um, detail, the depth of the pieces. But be careful because sometimes black will dull actually the the colors instead of helping pop it. Sometimes don't don't go don't quote me on that all the way. So I've loaded my brush up with my Tamiya XF2. Uh, which is flat white. Now I have white and regular white, but I like the flat. For some reason, I, I just seem to have better um, better experience with the flat paints than even the glossy paints. So what I've done is, all I'm going to do is go ahead and give it a, you know, give it a, give it a coat on there. And the great thing is, um, you know, it's like you can see on the tape, how much more and again with like all my painting even though I'm doing a primer uh, this is 
this flat white is a primer coat, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to get too much paint on there because if I do that, then um, it can hide a lot of the amazing detail that's in this kit. So, so the flat white is going to really help bring out the um, aluminum colors and the chrome colors and that because um, when I go and do the truck body color I'm gonna go I'm still deciding whether I want to do the the black and, and stay with it because or do a little bit different but I am definitely going to be using this is uh, Vallejo 71.073 this is metalized black I love this stuff this is amazing stuff I love it um, so yay now if you see you got like a you see right here when I did the brush a little bit if you ever get these little blobs like that just take a take your q-tip or whatever and give it um, just blot that out and then go back and paint it again And I, like I said, I leave some of these on there, on these sprues, because it's a heck of a lot easier to be able to work it like this than um, take this and take it off the sprue, put it down, and then I have to wait for it to dry to flip it over to paint the other side. Now these, I don't have to do that because there's nothing on too much to that because it all goes into, it all matches to the kit well. And I'll tell you what, if I'm wrong, you, I'll definitely be the first one to tell you that. This one, okay, in there. Then get the manifolds. And if you notice, I'm trying not to get any paint where um, it's going to be glued down. And if it does, I can just go back and clean that later. And I am going to have to go clean some flash off of those guys, so I have to wait on to do those again. Let those go ahead and just dry, and then I'll do a, a quick sanding on the seam, on the flash, and go from there. And, yay, put that right there. So now I'm just kind of letting it get dried and then um, I'll do another coat and then once that's dry I'll come in and I'll start doing some aluminum um, but I just want to let you know and that's why I'm giving it this white base coat and once I do these in primer and I make sure all my seams for the pieces to go together then I will go also and put re once I'm happy with the seams then I will go back and do a white and uh, yeah go from there so all right, guys. Well, I'm going to get back at it. Just give you a, a little thing. Oh, um, another thing. Like I said, I got them washed off. Look at that. That is awesome. So, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to keep at it. I'll be back. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, getting back to work on the Ford. Um, I went ahead and I put a primer coat. And I'm trying, because it's still cold up here in North Dakota, I'm going with the Vallejo surface primer. I've tried this a couple of times before, but I think I finally got it figured out. So, um, what I did is I went ahead and did that primer. And as you can tell, I have to do it again because that's the thing about the white primer. Some of these lighter gray primers, it's hard sometimes to tell if you got primer on it or not. Um, so, I probably am going to have to because I know I'm going to have to because I'm going to fix this and then do primer again. So, what I'm trying to share with you is these injection marks. Now, um, you can, like I said, you can build it however you want, but I got it for me, I need to get rid of these injection marks because, you know me, I know they're there, and I just don't want them there. So, sorry, I was getting some things out of the way. So what I got is my, my cadrum, my cadrum, and I've got a big wide bit right here. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just going in here and trying to get that injection down. Try to get this all smooth. And I got this on a very low um, 
rotation. So, and all I'm doing is just lightly going back and forth and starting to take down that, that, uh, those injection marks. Now, once I get them down, I'm going to have to do uh, some putty work. I can already tell you that. Because um, even with you get the injection motor, you know, you get it all sanded down and then at that place, oh, yay, cool, great. You're still going to have to because the injection motor, it's indented to a bit. And I want to just knock down the edges and then um, just add a little bit of putty to help smooth that back out. So, and again, I just keep going until I get that pretty darn close. And I know it's kind of hard to tell, guys, and I apologize. Let me try this real quick. Let me see if I can do something here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my exposure. I'm going to darken it. Oh, I'm going to darken it up a bit more so you can actually see. Yeah. Ah, that works. And as you see, I'm just, as easy as I can, going and taking that out. And then, you know, if you ever wonder, just take your finger in. And I'm feeling it, and it's pretty darn close. I might not have to actually use putty. I might just have to go in with my sander. But let's do this one. Now, as you can see, it looks like it's, it's, it's flat and solid, but actually, a lot of times, not. And again, and I used to do this with my Dremel. Oh, my God, that thing, I would... Oh man, it's, even as low as it was, I could over, over aggressive with it just a bit, and I could definitely, instead of fixing it, I made a bigger problem, so. So again, I just keep going in, and I'm just going to take it out, and keep working that. So. I'm going to keep doing that one, but uh, give me a second and I'll show you another one real quick um, where there is injection pins. So here is the frame. Now this is all underneath, so yay. And you really don't have to worry about these up here, but I usually sand them down anyway because I want them, you know, I don't, I want the whole surface to be smooth because I paint everything. And again, just I take this, it's easier, but what I want to show you, and yes, I will have to do more painting, I'll have to primer it again, but that's okay, because if you look at the side, you see how that little injection right there, that's what I'm trying to get rid of, and maybe, getting there, and sometimes, um, you know, I'll stop what I'm doing, I'll brush it, and then I'll come back with my uh, a sanding stick like this. And just try to get it finished off. Keep it nice and smooth. And then just keep going back and looking at it. Now, yes, when you do it, make sure you get outside. So, um, so I'm going to get these fixed up, and then after that, we'll get back, we'll, we'll get some more painting. I've already got some things painted. Um but they're getting clear coated because there's more I got to do for them. So um, as I get these fixed up, guys, I will turn the camera back on and share with you. So I'll see you soon. All right, let's get some more paint put down. So I'm using the Vallejo Model Air um, Black Metallic on the parts that said, oh, gloss black. You know, um, I'm keeping with some of the paint, but not a lot of it. But uh, this will work. So. Again, guys, um, anytime using a metallic paint, especially Vallejo, um, you don't have to put a whole lot in there. Um, a couple of squirt, you know, and you just bring it up when you thin it down. Um, to because uh, if you try to fill, you know, if you go oh right there, and then you're gonna lose a lot of paint. So if you do have a lot of ex extra leftover paint, make sure you get an empty paint jar. You know, a little like Tamiya or Testers or. Uh, um, those and be able to um, um, store that paint. So, again, when you're doing metallics, I don't push a lot of air through. I just want it. Let's see if I can get up here for you. 
I um, and I'm definitely not going to try to do it all in one coat because if I did that, yeah, it's not going to look good. So, so just like that one, and then I'll turn it over. Actually, no, I'll wait to turn it over, get that done, and um, I'm going to do the radiator in a black, but I'm going to tweak it though. Trust me when I get it all done. So, the radiator. Sorry, but you know, I'm gonna fix that one day. So, and then I guess I'm gonna paint the frame the same way too. So, go underneath, and then, and like I said again, I'm not going trying to cover it all in one one foul sheet one foul swoop. Um, I'm just, you know, wanting to get get it started. And again, the same thing here is I'm going to paint the top part. This is what goes up towards the cab and everything, and then I'll turn it over and paint the bottom. But, you know, yeah, I know, too much thing on my, my bench, right? Hold on, let me do this real quick. Let me put you there. Move you there, move you there. There, now, okay. And a lot of times I have a turntable, and I got that, but all my turntables right now are, I have a lot of parts, so. But again, all I'm doing, like I said, I'm just, not even, you know, I'm not trying to do it all in one coat, trust me. Because if you try to do it all in one coat, like I said, it's going to get kind of messy. And then make sure when you're doing opposite, keep it in camera, but. Um, and as you can see, I have my airbrush away. Some people might have it closer, but when it comes to the metallic painting part of it, I don't want it very close because if you get it too close, let's see if I can share that with you real quick. Let's see, I got those in there. All right. I'll use an old Tamiya um, painting. So let's say here, if that's the far part. Um, that's why I do it far. You can see that. But now if you're coming close and you go and, and you just try to... You see that? You see how that goes? Um, you see how I just splattered and pulled? Um, and that does that either paint, but um, the metallics will do it a little bit more. So you want to make several passes. Because if you try to paint it all in one pass like that, you see how it starts to kind of gloop? So... Um, that's why I do it like this and I'm far away and it's, that's a good rule of thumb for any paint through an airbrush don't be right up on it like right here um, come, go a bit further away so I talked too much so. and there we go and don't forget to get get the uh, back sides of the crossbars and the front sides too because I've done that before, and I'll go, oh no! So, alright guys, well, I'm going to keep painting, and um, once I get done, I will, uh, I'm going to go on to something else, and then I'll, I'll come back when I have a lot, of thing, a lot more things painted, and, or when I start uh, another project with the paint, so I will return. Hey everyone, welcome back, back to the Ford, and I've got all these clear coated, and I'm going to do something special with these guys here, and I'm going to show you here in a minute. I got a little bit of paint to do there, um, just those caps, and then I did get the brake disc done. Now I did this in the Vallejo steel, and then I'm going to come back in here and hand hand paint these guys, and I'll share that with you. But um, one of the things, like I said, this is all clear coated. One of the things I'm going to start doing is I want to go ahead and start getting the decals and get them in place, um, and let them get set for a bit, because that's the way, I, you know, normally I just always do decals at the end, but with this kind of an engine and where they want these decals, you got to kind of do them as you go. So, um, definitely not going to be using these guys, these bit, these, these for the door panels. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to start taking my decal sheet apart. It's kind of like so, and I have lots of scissors, trust me. i got big ones, small ones. I gotta get a new pair of these. Um, I got these at uh, 
Home Depot. These are Fiskars. I've had these forever and I need to get me a new one because these guys are starting to get a little dull. Okay, so what I'm doing right now, when you go to, um, I, I always cut my decals down to uh, make sure I have everything loose and ready to go. Um, I have a Ziploc bag, but I always cut my decals. And one of the big things I do is I want to remember to leave, if I ever, you know, if I, do, if I was going to use that decal, I want to leave the number so I know what it corresponds to on the sheet. But I'm not using these guys, so I'm not too worried about that. But, again, I'm just going to, like I said, and just trimming them out, getting them where I want now the big ones that I don't use, I'm going to put in with my other um, decals that I haven't used. And then, um, so who knows, maybe one day I will. But uh, as you can see, what I'm needing to do is get into this area right here. And I'm going to have to keep, so that's what I'm trying to get all these guys out of the way. Because I'm going to need them. And like I said, be, be careful. Um, doing it a little bit, you you know, give yourself enough um, room for margin when you cut these out to uh, be able to cut them out without cutting into the other decals. And then you got stuff like this one guy right there. I mean, I tell you, what the heck, right? And... Yeah, I'm pretty good. I've got, I've got a lot of practice doing this, guys, so... You go and get this one. And there we go. So I got the big ones out of the way. I'm I, I, I'm still debating whether I want to use this or not. I, I do like the way it is, but I like the paint too, so I'm gonna figure that out. So now um, I'm getting to where I need to, so Keeping them in their group, just like that for right now. Because. And let's get you. We'll get you. And. And then, like I said, that's all I do is I just start cutting the separate pieces. And then things, like I said, I know I'm not going to need yet. I, I just want to get them cut and ready to go. So I'll put you there. Put you there. And then I'll have to look and see which ones um, I'm going to need. Because what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to do the, the, um, the valve covers, the uh, engine block, and then I've got the engine. Um, I'm going to paint it again. Um, I wasn't it it's all aluminum and I'm I've been going through the photos and I'm trying to think if that's okay. You know, I, I like it but you know it, I don't know, I'm still thinking. So but I might probably just go back with aluminum. I'm, I haven't decided yet with the, whether I'm gonna do that or I'm gonna do at steel. I haven't decided yet, but we'll get there. Okay, so now I got those cut out and what I'm going to look for and what I want to keep is right now is just these guys right here. So, oh, I'm sorry, I should have put it on the camera. I'm going to just use these guys right here. So let me put that somewhere. So I need 12 and 13. Right there, cool. I'll need 10. Which, lucky, right there. Then I will need 11. Okay, there's 11. I know I'm going to use, I'm going to go ahead and, um, I know he's coming. So I know I got to have you. And that's not on the sheet right there, but then that's, you know, and then, then this is for another one. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I have a nice little plastic baggie here. So the ones that I'm not 
using, I want to make sure I keep in a secure, close location because I can't tell you how many times I've done this and I thought that I had them and yeah, yeah, that didn't work out so well. So, okay. Alrighty. All right. So those are in there. I'm going to seal this up and um, now I'm going to get to starting on the decaling. So give me just a second to get some couple of things and then let's I'll get on to it. So I'll be right back. Good morning and back at it. And yes, as you can tell, I've done some primer gray. Um, it'll work. It'll, it, it's going to help. Trust me. Um, what I wanted to share with you guys is I sprayed these guys yesterday. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking some very fine, um, very, uh, lots of grain. This is 8,000. That's 4,000. I got 6,000. 3208, 12,000, and 3600. Um, what I'm doing is basically I'm taking this and I'm just lightly going over the primer that I sprayed to help get rid of any of that. If there's any of those um, dust bubbles that like to, you know, sit on the primer as it's drying and those from, you know, blowing it or using the spray can. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now guys and then after that I'm going to show you another really cool thing I do um, not just on vehicles but on all my kits that I build but all I'm doing right now is I'm just sanding down getting a lot of that sanded down so when I go to do the body paint I can tell what it is and since I've already done a lot of that and same here with this I've already sanded that so again like I said I'm just going easy I'm not even I'm letting the sand pad do the work because all I want is just to get it smooth again and you can feel when you run your hand along um, if it's you know let's, see, let's go here and as you can see as it starts I can pick it up I just switch brushes or switch sand pads and I just keep going now you might remove a little bit of the primer but you're not going to move hardly in very much at all and if there is a little removal then I didn't get it sprayed well enough I didn't coat it well enough but and like I said that's all I'm doing is just taking this and just getting that all all taken out and I do the underside same Basically, that's it right there guys. So let me finish getting things sanded down and then I'll come back and, and we'll get started on pre-shading. Alright, so what I'm doing and it's called pre-shading and basically what that does is I, what that means is I want to get a lot of the definition a lot of the definition into you know here. Let me see that. Just one second. Here we go. Okay. Thought I had it all cleaned. Um, what it's doing is it's creating definition. And the great thing about pre-shading is you don't have to be real, real precise with it um, because you're going to paint it later, or I am anyway. So basically, all I'm doing. Is I want to bring out the definition on this bed. And, and as you can see, yeah, sometimes being straight doesn't work. But that's the great thing about pre-shading. And what this is also going to help me do is make that wood effect when I get ready to do that. So, all I'm doing is just highlighting some areas. And that's it. like so and there and just like that now let me show you on on the truck it's a little bigger and it's a little easier to see than that so 
again, all I'm doing, and especially like the door, you know, all these spots where there's going to be, you see the recesses. So I want to create that shadow in there. And that's basically all I'm doing is just creating depth, as you can tell. Same thing inside. And then on the front. Just a lack of soap. And if you get a spot like that, you know, a spray like that, it's, it's really easy to take care of. Just come in with a Q-tip. Get my Q-tip. And basically all I do is that. I just start, you know, wiping up those little blobs in case that's what it was. And go from there. like that now once that dries and it usually doesn't take very long to dry um, but you know okay now where's all the okay. sorry I was trying to find all the where I put them all so I'll do one more with you guys and then um, I'm gonna get back at it so let's go ahead and do the truck bed so And I guess the best way about pre-shading is find what makes you like it, where you want that detail to start sticking out. Okay? Find where you want that detail to stick out. Where you want to see more of it. Like, like right here. So all I'm doing is, like I said, I'm just creating a bit more shading. Like that. I'm not really worried about how, it's not, the great thing is, I'm not putting down a lot of paint. So, yay! Okay. Yeah. This will be the last one I'll show you guys, and then I'll get back at it. Just like that. So let me finish getting these guys done, and um, when they get started drying, then I'll come back and uh, we'll get some more painting done. So, all right, guys, see you soon. All right, back to painting. Um, right now, I'm doing some dry brushing on the radiator. I've uh, used my aluminum to dry brush there, and now I'm doing the same thing on the back. And if you've never dry brushed, it's not too hard. Um, get some paint on your brush and then have a paper towel, whatever, and try to get as much as you, as you want off of it because now all I wanted to do is hit the highlights, just like so. You see how that's just, how it's, it's not going all the way in, it's just touching the highlights to show that off. And that's all I wanted to do. Maybe just a tad bit more. And then, there we go, look at that, and there we go, and now, looks really cool, I like that, that's very cool. Also, I've done some weathering um, on the engine, and I will cover the weathering when I do uh, what's down right now getting um, clear coated, uh, but I did some weathering, 
and you know I, I like that more it, it's got a good decent look to it but I like that a little bit grown I, I I don't know how to say it but it just gives it detail it just adds that shadowing so yay and then I get to get put the decals onto the brakes and uh, just keep painting so that's where I'm at right now guys so as I get more finished I will definitely turn the camera back on and share all right um, well let's get some more paint down so I'm gonna start doing the body and I'm going with give me a second I'm gonna go with the Vallejo Arctic Blue um, still got more passes to make on that but this is it 71.071 I really like it I haven't got a chance to use a lot of it so why not and right now I got the uh, top of the cab here and again with any kind of airbrushing or even when you do metallic paints don't forget don't do it all at once and don't be you know don't worry about that and then you can see how it's starting to cover up that pre-shading that I'm doing but like I said again don't get too close don't try to do it all at once um, just keep on to go and I would show you guys on this I'll try the best I can all right, maybe I can but I thought I'd start with the hood here first you kind of see like right there what I mean it kind of ran just a bit so I'm gonna just tap that up and that little bit right there that can come from being too close or putting down too much so or it just might be a defect in the kit sometimes you don't learn it till after you do it and as you can see I'm not I'm not going crazy I'm just gonna you know do that now I'm gonna let that sit and dry a bit and we'll see where it's at but now I'm gonna make a mess here so get some more paper towels probably at least try to get some paper towels because I'm gonna be doing it like try to do it like this okay so again um, let's get some painting done and also what happens there like you see that again that might be because the paint is too thin because um, I, I, I dilute it down but if it's too thin it will just spray like that so I'm gonna add a little bit more just do a little bit more get her all good and mixed up Okay, there we go. Then I'll do a test. There we go. Let me see how far. Okay, let's do that. Sorry, guys. Okay, now let's try it. And as you can see, I'm not trying to get it all done at once. I'm just trying to get it started. Like I said, as you can see, I keep my brush away because if I don't, it's going to pull again like that, and we don't want it to do that. Okay, now get some hair on the top. The good thing is I don't have to paint this, and there's a reason why I'm not painting this because that's where that top goes, and if I painted it, it might not want to play nice and stick. All I'm doing is just doing that. And yes, I will do the underneath later. So, okay. That's it right there. And I'm going to do a few more passes, but... I'm actually really liking that color. I'm going to do a few more passes, and when I get done with that, I will show you. But also, just thought I'd let you out of the way. Starting to get that lovely engine together. Really like how that turned out. And yes, I'm going to be doing spark plug wiring. So, But I'm going to get back to painting, guys, so I'll see you in a bit. Okay, well, here's where I'm going to end it for this week. 
starting to get paint to the truck body and if you're asking why I didn't get the tailgate done yet those sorry the injection molds I gotta get those taken care of um, but that'd be easy so that and then like I said remember guys when I told you I wasn't gonna paint that inside because don't need to so yay then chassis painted and then the engine is very start very good it's going together right right well good yeah right well it's coming together beautifully let me say that then I've got the decal on to that to go on the engine I got the decal on the discs the disc brakes chrome and uh, lots of other parts already going but I'm not gonna drag them all out here so with that, guys, please have a fun, enjoyable, and safe rest of your weekend. Have a fun, safe, and awesome work week next week. And I'll see you guys all back here on the bench.